What if I told you mortality was relative? What if I told you it had nothing to do with dying and everything to do with one's perception of death? The elves within the Lord of the Rings are immortal, yes, but their souls and bodies are bound to the world and its fate. But what truly happens to them if the fate of the world itself is uncertain? Men lead simple lives. They are born, they grow up, and if they are lucky enough to get old, they die. In between all of these stages, as covered in my video on why death is a gift, men experienced all of the emotions, challenges and achievements that come with knowing for certain that one day, perhaps sooner rather than later, their lives will come to an end. They will, it is a certainty. And to make things worse, the only uncertain thing about this whole ordeal is also the most important. What comes after death? In this, Tolkien brings into play the god of his world, heavily inspired by the Christian god, who guides mortals and permits them spiritual respite so long as they trust in him and trust that after death God will take care of them. Those who have no trust pay the consequences and are consumed by their own fear of what comes afterwards. Having explained in brief the lives and deaths of men, let us now examine Tolkien's elves and see how they contrast. The elves of the Lord of the Rings are beings of higher existence than men. They are physically more durable and powerful and their knowledge as well as time to captivate their abilities are infinitely more than that of men. Their connection to the divine is stronger, they are wiser and their long lives allow them to achieve great things. Unlike men however, they cannot escape the world and its fate. When they die, they exist for a time in the halls of Mandos and are eventually returned to the physical world. The elves were granted these wonderful gifts alongside their immortality and yet their immortality was their greatest obstacle and challenge. They were forever imprisoned in a tale, in a story. They were forced to forever experience all of the death and agony and evil that the world experienced and would continue to experience through Morgoth's original corruption of the music of creation. Even in their moments of triumph over evil, they would still be wary. They were the destined watchers of the world and there was nothing they could do about it. Where death was the gift of men as it permitted them greater spiritual development and served as a beast to be mastered, the same was the case with the immortality of the elves but in reverse. With that said, I return to my original question in the beginning of the video. What if mortality and immortality were relative and had nothing to do with actual death or lack thereof? Men are born, they grow, they die. Elves too are born and they too grow, the latter just considerably slower. They can physically die, but it doesn't matter as it isn't permanent. What does matter is something that they would perceive as death in the same way that men do, something that would make their immortality seem all too mortal. What is that, you may ask? Well, if the fate of the elves is forever and ever bound to the fate of the world, what would happen to the elves once the world is no more? Mind you, it doesn't matter whether or not Tolkien had any intention of the world ceasing to exist, what matters is what his elves knew. In Morgoth's ring, he wrote extensively regarding this insecurity that the elves had. If a mortal man has a fear of dying, does an elf fearing the fate of their soul following the end of the world not have the same result on an emotional and spiritual level for the both of them? Their circumstances, especially the lengths of their physical existence are completely different and yet they are both afraid of what will happen to them after their respective ends, which I think is the literal definition of mortality in this case. In Morgoth's ring it is said that Beyond the end of Arda, elvish thought could not penetrate and they were without any specific instruction. It seemed clear to them that their horror must then end and therefore any kind of reincarnation would be impossible. All the elves would then die at the end of Arda. What this would mean, they did not know. The fate of their existence after the end of the world was a concept as incomprehensible, foreign and absolutely terrifying as death is to an average man. This is the ultimate bridge between the two races and the answer is right in front of us. They are the two natural born children of Iluvatar. Their struggle is as intended by Eru Iluvatar for their growth and this is precisely what Tolkien had in mind. In order to be able to deal with the concept of the unknown, both elves and men as well as humans in our world as was Tolkien's true inspiration must put their trust in Eru Iluvatar or God. They must recognize the limit of their knowledge and believe sincerely that Eru would not create them, grant them free will and consciousness, give them hope and the capacity to love and then simply abandon them to non-existence. That Eru did not create them to annihilate them at some far off point in the future. That regardless of what happens, all they have to do, elves and men both, is lead good and honest lives they would be proud of 
and leave the rest to Iluvatar. Trust in him to see through the plans that he has arranged since the breaking of the first silence when the world was first created. Plans that they believe through their faith will bring them growth, joy and satisfaction with their existence. Finrod, the brother of Galadriel, in his conversation with Andreth, echoes the aforementioned. He echoes the fear of the unknown, and he mentions his guess that through the end of the world, the children of Iluvatar too will be ended. But then his faith is surfaced, and he sees Arda remade, and he believes that through Eru's vision, men and elves will persist. Though the world would be dominated by men, and the role of the elves will be completed, the two brotherly races will endure, and the elves with their long memories will continue to teach the race of men. And millennia upon millennia after these legendary events, they will still teach the story of Beren and Luthien, and of Feanor and the creation of the Silmarils, and of the Dark Lords, and of terrible perils and great deeds, of triumphs and falls. In the end, this is all just belief. Finrod can never be certain. Nonetheless, his belief is that Iluvatar will not abandon them, and that the elves will exist alongside their younger siblings, and guide them in bliss. I hope now I've helped you understand the true nature of the elves' immortality and guided you through their perspective on the world, as well as their own existence. I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback on this wonderful topic, whether you agree or disagree with me. Thank you very much for watching.